Did you know that there are over a hundred different types of cancer? But what is cancer exactly? Well, normally, your body produces new cells when you need them by replacing old ones that die or become damaged. However, defective DNA may cause cells to not die when they should, and new cells might form when the body doesn't need them. These extra cells can then accumulate to form clumps of cells called a tumor. Some tumors can be non-cancerous, or benign, but others can be cancerous, and this is called malignant. These malignant cells can invade nearby tissues. They can also break away and spread or metastasize to other parts of the body through the blood and lymph systems. While chemotherapy and radiation are the most reliable treatments for cancer these days, new research is looking into how your diet can also support recovery. One of the diets being researched is the ketogenic diet. Now before we can take a look at whether cancer can indeed be affected by the ketogenic diet, we first need to understand what the ketogenic diet is and how it works. The ketogenic, or keto, diet is a dietary regime in which carbohydrate intake is heavily reduced, and the majority of calories come instead from fat, usually in a ratio of about 3 to 4 grams of fat for each gram of protein and carbohydrates. This low-carb, high-fat diet mimics the metabolic state of fasting, known as ketosis. In ketosis, molecules called ketones are made from a process called beta-oxidation. Beta-oxidation is where free fatty acids, obtained through fat breakdown called lipolysis, are transferred to the mitochondria, where they are then broken down into ketone bodies. Normally, the body uses glucose from carbohydrate food sources to make ATP, the fuel used by your cells. But when there aren't enough carbohydrates to meet this energy requirement, as in ketosis, these ketone bodies are made instead and can then be used as an alternate energy source. So now the big question, can the ketogenic diet help treat cancer? According to a recent study, a ketogenic diet might be a potential treatment for squamous cell cancer. Let us begin by addressing what is squamous cell cancer. Squamous cell cancer is a type of skin cancer that results in the uncontrolled proliferation of squamous cells, thin, flat cells that make up the epidermis, the outermost part of the skin. Now back to the experiment. Mice with implanted tumors were fed either a ketogenic diet or a normal diet. Mice on the keto diet had their tumor growth rate slowed compared to mice with a normal diet. How is this possible? Well, a protein called GLUT1 helps transport glucose across plasma membranes in mammals. In squamous cancerous cells, there's an overexpression of this GLUT1 that might be linked to an increased reliance on glucose to enhance tumor growth. The breakdown of glucose supports cancer progression because the cancerous cells use this form of energy to maintain normal cellular activity. Without glucose, the cancer cells are unable to proliferate, which is where the keto diet comes into play. When we follow a ketogenic diet, our blood glucose levels decrease, which also decreases insulin levels. Without enough glucose, cancer cells are unable to grow and spread throughout the body. Now while this all may sound like a revolutionary discovery, there may actually be some drawbacks to using the ketogenic diet to treat cancer. The ketogenic diet involves an increased intake of animal fats and red meat, as well as a reduced intake of fiber-rich fruits, vegetables, beans, and whole grains. This increases the risk of heart disease, mortality, and kidney and colorectal cancer. Therefore, while the keto diet may help with the treatment of some cancers, it can actually increase the risk of others. Furthermore, the ketogenic diet promotes weight loss, which is not ideal in treating cancer patients, as weight loss is already a significant concern. Changes in the immune system, metabolism, pain, nausea, and vomiting all contribute to this issue. Fat and muscle loss can lead to delayed healing after surgery, longer recovery time between chemotherapy cycles, and a delayed commencement of radiation therapy because of the side effects. It's because of this that doctors advise patients to actually increase their caloric intake during cancer treatments. Another major concern is that the studies conducted on the effects of the ketogenic diet on cancer patients had varying results. One study showed that the keto diet actually encouraged tumor growth in mice with melanomas, a type of malignant skin cancer. Furthermore, almost a third of studies conducted on the keto diet in cancer patients have shown no change in their tumors. This indicates that there is still much more research that needs to be done in order to determine if the keto diet is an effective treatment for cancer patients. 
Most important of all is that people considering this diet should always consult their healthcare provider before making any drastic lifestyle or medicinal changes. This diet is not a replacement for medications, chemotherapy, and radiation. Thank you for listening, and please like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video.